Welcome back to the RV Rundown. I'm your host, Barry, and this is a segment where we take a look at some of the hottest floor plans on the market today. I'm standing inside a brand new 2023 Venture Sport Trek Touring Edition 343 VBH. This is a bunkhouse travel trailer built with family in mind. I think it's pretty luxurious because they've got so many hidden little built-in storage features niceties like solid surface counters and skylights, just loads of cool little things. But let's get started right here in the kind of combined kitchen living room space where we have a feature that I don't see that much. This is what Venture calls the King U. What's neat about the King U is that it replaces the little jackknife sofa and your booth dinette to give us one giant sofa that's good for the whole family. There's even a table that can plug in in front of us and give it like a dining option. So people do still have a place to sit and eat at the end of the day and it's pretty quick and easy to set up. This also serves as a guest bed. This folds out and over and we have an Inatech queen size inflatable mattress that can be put down on top of it if you do have extra guests or exceed the number of people that you could potentially sleep in that bunk room. There's also other cool features like the storage, this built in down low, there's drawers that slide out just for keeping those extra odds and ends. And of course this is right across from our angled entertainment center. I love that fact because we don't have to crane our head to look at the TV. It's in a really great place, nice big flat screen. We've got some storage down below it as well as our Bluetooth head unit that's located inside. So if you did want to play DVDs or listen to your music, you can do so. And down low, this is an in a flame electric fireplace, which is going to provide additional electric heat to the vehicle and cut down on your LP cost. I think overall, this is a really great use of space as far as living rooms go in a travel trailer with a bunkhouse floor plan. Oftentimes, it seems like there's not enough space to seat the whole family, and this certainly solves it. Let's pop back through, and on the way to the main bedroom, we're going to pass one of the two bathrooms here. This is a bath and a half floor plan. The main bathroom has a pass through it's like a jack and jill tile entrance from the main area and then into our bedroom so we have access to it from the bedroom or from the living room our bedroom has an east west bed this is awesome because you can walk all the way around it it gives us plenty of space to get up put on clothes at the beginning of the day there's a chest of drawer that's right at the foot of the bed. It features some awesome stuff like hidden storage in the top, another in a flame fireplace, just heating up that bedroom. Oh, and I should mention, this thing's 50 amp service and features two ACs, one of which is right here in the bedroom. We have more traditional style closet space on the left and the right and the very front with some drawers down below. And of course there's plugs up top in case we need to plug in some extra little items here and there. Above our bed we also have more storage in the form of shelves and cabinetry. Again, more plugs just in case you might need them. Let's head back to the back. Let's check out that bunk room because that is where the rest of the family's gonna sleep. It's got room to sleep four folks. Uh, you could potentially sleep five if you had small children, but it'd be a little bit of a squeeze because there is a jackknife sofa down low. So we have the fold away bed up top in the slide that folds up and out of the way and latches into place. And the jackknife sofa below it, which will lay out flat and allow for one to two people to sleep there. We also have bunks directly across from that. There's storage down below. They have a nice built-in ladder here. I think that's pretty cool. And they put USB ports at each bunk, just giving us a place to plug in our phones or tablets or whatever else keeps those kids occupied. If you did want to put a TV back here, we've got an option with the TV backer location on the back wall, as well as our plugs up above it. And they didn't skimp on storage. They gave us a nice size closet right by our entryway. Now I mentioned that this is bath and a half. 
The other half bathroom is right here by our bunk room. So they don't have to traipse all the way through the camper going up and disturbing anyone sleeping in the main bedroom if somebody's got to use the bathroom at night. The other nice thing about this is that it has a second entry door to the outside, which acts as just another emergency exit should we need it. That brings us into our kitchen. It's fairly well appointed. Before I get into this actual side of it, I want to mention that they do give you some pantry space on this side of the kitchen in the form of some nice upright cabinetry there. Just a good spot to store some odds and ends. We have a Furion 12 volt refrigerator. This is becoming more and more popular these days. We rarely see the gas electrics anymore. We've got a Furion microwave, a three burner glass covered stovetop with an oven down below, solid surface countertops, a big stainless steel single basin sink with a nice high rise faucet for getting those pots and pans cleaned out. And Venture does some pretty neat things. They've even thrown in a cool little cutting board that you could potentially use as like a charcuterie tray or something like that. Lots of storage all the way around it in the form of this nice bright white cabinetry that we see here. This is great because it lightens up the room and it just gives us storage options abound. Right at our entrance, we find that there's a couple of cool things going on. Some weird little hidden storage on the end of the cabinetry. Again, Venture just taking advantage of every little dead space that they can. They put USB plugs in there. So if you have a no phones in the house rule, that's a great place to lock them up and keep them charged. Coat closet just to the right as soon as we come through the door. We also have a Go Power charging station or solar monitoring station, I should say, right here at the top. There's a big old solar panel up on the roof and it runs through this charge controller, helping to keep all of our 12 volt topped off and running so that we can keep the lights on when we're boondocking and very light, you know, off-grid situations. It's not enough to run air conditioners, but it's certainly enough to keep all of our 12 volt systems topped off. I love the way that Venture has incorporated this panel here. It's nice and high. It's out of the way from little hands getting to it, but there's a selection system that runs through which slides and awnings you're going to operate, main, retract, extend, and then it's also got all of our tank notifications on there as well. Now what I want to do is run the slides in real quick just so we can see what it looks like with everything in since we get that asked of us so much. And let's go ahead and make that happen. And we're in. All right, so this thing's actually kind of cool with all the slides in because we do have a fair amount of access. Now I can't get to the primary bedroom or the primary bathroom where the shower is, but I do have access to the King U, the entertainment center, the storage that's right through the door. Because of the shape of the King U, I can pretty easily walk by the couch and into the kitchen where I can get into my refrigerator, I can get up here to my microwave, use the sink, whatever else I might need. I can even get to that half bath with ease. Now remember, this also has an entrance from the outside, so we wouldn't have to squeeze through if we needed it. You could just go to the bathroom at a quick pit stop by going through that door. The bunk room, not really accessible due to the fact that there's a slide on the other side of it. But if you remember, we had that pantry in the corner and I can get into it. So as far as snacks and food and getting stuff out of the fridge using the bathroom, big thumbs up here, it really works. Let's open everything back up and check out some of the features outside. The patio side of this camper is pretty well appointed too. They've given us a really large electric awning over our front entryway here that runs out at the touch of a button. It spans a lot of the patio side and it's LED lit. In my opinion, maybe the only downfall here, and it's because of the shape of the bedroom, is the pass-through storage. It's not that big. It does go all the way through. It is kind of tall but you're gonna have a hard time getting anything large in and out of there. That may be, in my mind, the only detriment that this particular camper has. Now, going back towards that front, it has the step above entry stairs that we see so commonly across the entry. 
These are just getting to be really popular. They make contact with the ground and make it easy to get in and out. A big grab handle up here and some nice fancy wheels that are wrapped in Goodyear tires. I think that's pretty cool. We have power out here in case you did want to hook up a TV. We've got those options, but there's already one in the outside kitchen. Remember that door we talked about earlier that heads into that half bathroom? So if you have a quick pit stop, that's easily accessible. But this might be the star of the show on the patio side. This is super cool. We've got a few things going on here. So we have this big metal drawer that pulls straight out. It has latches to keep it out and in place. It's metal because if it gets exposed to any wetness or water, it's not gonna swell or become a problem. Built into it, we have a suburban griddle, a stainless steel sink. Up high, we've got another Bluetooth head unit here that's connected back to our flat screen TV and our outside speakers. Storage in the form of cabinetry up high and another electric refrigerator. How cool is that? This is where I would probably spend most of my time if I own this thing is out here up under the awning, just enjoying being outside on vacation. I love the fact that this griddle is here. I would cook on that all of the time. The back of the vehicle has a ladder which heads up to our fully functional roof. This is fully walkable is what I really meant to say there because this is a six side aluminum cage construction. It's a fiberglass outer wall and then they've got that backed with Asdell. So this thing's really built for longevity. Down low we have a two inch receiver. This is meant for accessories so things like bike racks or cargo racks, it is not designed with tandem towing in mind. Up high, we have a spot where it's pre-wired for a backup camera. That's gonna allow us to have a plug and play system so that we can see what we're backing up into in the sites. All of our windows here are frameless. I think that's really cool. And this slide being right here on the end, right, just gives me a good chance to kind of point out some of the running gear. This is on a Norcal Huck bolted frame. This has BAL slide systems built in. If you take a look at those, they're rack and pinion, like mechanical style drives. And I really think that they're a lot nicer. They're certainly beefier looking than some of the other stuff in the industry. On the off door side, there's a couple of things going on. One, because this has two bathrooms on board, one up front, one in the back, there are two sewage dump points. So between our two rear slides, we have one of the sewage dump points as well as our shoreline connection and a really cool little wet bay. So they've added in the spot with a single water connection where we have a switch that chooses between city fill and tank fill. That can be locked up so nobody tampers with your water. Down low, it has our cable and satellite in as well as a nice little outside shower for hosing things off since it is right there above the dump station. The second sewer outlet is going to be between the next set of slides down low. This is off of the main bathroom there. So if you did buy this camper, I would suggest getting one of those Y setups for your sewer hose. Seems appropriate. You could use one and switch back and forth between them, but I think it's easier, especially on long trips, to leave everything hooked up. Now they've carved out storage wherever they can just because they have such a small pass through. On the back side of the bed in the bedroom, we have this nice big hatch that opens up and gives us some extra outside storage space. And that's simply because of what I was mentioning earlier about the pass through on this just not being that big. It's not that wide. It's hard to get big crates and stuff in and out of it, but there's certainly ample storage out here in my mind. At the very front, we have a fully molded front cap with that automotive grade windshield up high. There's some beautiful LED running lights that are gonna help illuminate this thing at night. And we have a power tongue jack, nice big LP cover, and a battery cut off down low. So when you're putting into storage, we can switch that off and not worry about draining the battery down. All in all, this thing has some really cool features. At 9,000 pounds dry, this model might not be for everyone, 
but I can see how it's awesome for big families or folks that just want a little extra space to stretch out and lounge. That King U is certainly an awesome option and is something that is available across several other models in the Venture lineup. It just has to be specified when you order the Venture RV. Really this one that you should probably check out for yourself in person. So come on down to Southern RV in McDonough, Georgia, right off I-75 between exits 216 and 218, or give us a call at 770-477-0552. Until next time, happy camping.